Hi, it's Friday, October the 11th, and I continue to read and wonder my way through the book of Deuteronomy. And today it's Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 10 to 19. Uh, we started uh, Deuteronomy 6 yesterday uh, with, the, uh, with the Shema, the, um, the greatest commandment. Um, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And, and you know, the big part that we are meant to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our might. Or you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your might. Uh, and, and that, you know, that should be on our hearts. That should be on our doorposts. We should wear it on our bodies. We should teach our children and our grandchildren. This is the most important thing. This is the great, greatest commandment. Um, and so, uh, so here's what happens next. Deuteronomy 6, 10 to 19. When the Lord, your God has brought you into the land that he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and to give you a land with fine, large cities that you did not build, houses filled with all sorts of goods that you did not fill, hewn cisterns that you did not hew, vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. And when you've eaten your fill, take care that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. The Lord your God you shall fear. Him you shall serve, and by his name alone you shall swear. Do not follow other gods, any of the gods of the peoples who are all around you, because the Lord your God who is present with you is a jealous God. The anger of the Lord your God would be kindled against you, and he would destroy you from the face of the earth. Do not put the Lord your God to the test as you tested him at Massa. You must diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his decrees and his statutes that he has commanded you. Do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, so that it may go well with you, so that you may go on in and occupy the good land that the Lord swore to your ancestor to give you, thrusting out all your enemies from before you, as the Lord has promised. Oh my. So. So many things popping into my head here. Um. First thing I have to say up front, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, yeah. And that's a bias, obviously. Um, so why don't I like it? Just, ooh, I don't like it. Well, the covenant with Abraham, you know, and the covenant that carries on through the generations from God... Um, is that your descendants will be, you know, as many as the stars in the sky, sands, sands in the, uh, on the on the on the on the ground, all that stuff, um, and that that you will have a land. The promise was never, and I'll give you someone else's land with all the work already done. And 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 maybe, well, it's like, what? You know, <laughs> what did you think the land was empty? Um, I guess, yes, as a kid I did, but I'll say also naively, I went to school, you know, believing that as, um, as Western Europe expanded through the world, um, that uh, they were expanding into empty territory too. That's kind of what I was taught. That's, you know, the, the stories that I heard. So, of course, when they came to North America, it was like there was nobody here. But, of course, I, I know more than that now. Of course, there were people here. You know, and the Doctrine of Discovery just sort of meant that, well, but you can take it and claim it as yours because, well, because divinely so. If you come, I go on a, go on a side rant here. Uh, very briefly, the Doctrine of Discovery um, was an agreement um, that, a European agreement, that should you find a country where there are no Christians, you could claim it as yours. Uh, and then the people who were there, you could either make them Christian or you could kill them. Uh, and that was an agreement. Um, and so Spain and France, and England, and, uh, Belgium, but Portugal all expanded doing that basic thing. Um, and uh, it's what has put, um, well, put uh, settlers um, at, 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 at such odds, of course, with indigenous folk. And I'm not just talking about in Canada. I'm talking about Australia. I'm talking about Africa. I'm talking about anywhere. People who were already there were treated as lesser than the ones who came. 
And as a kid, I thought, well, that that, that was great. I mean, I heard, I heard all the great stories about, you know, um, all, all, all these great colonialists and settlers and, you know, how they tamed the new world and all that stuff. And it seemed great. Um, so I guess I'm not surprised that, you know, whenever I hear the sort of the, the, the covenant with Abraham, um, they go, well, I assume it's an empty land that nobody's there. But here's the reality of it. There are people there. And, and at this moment, we're celebrating that. Right, I mean, this this is very peculiar to me. Um, the Lord your God has brought you into the land that He swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with fine, large cities that you did not build. That wasn't part of the original covenant. In my, I didn't hear that. Just you'd have land, cities you don't build, houses filled with all sorts of goods you did not fill, hewn cisterns you did not hew, vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. And when you've eaten your fill, when you've taken all this stuff that you didn't work for, but you're loving it and enjoying it, make sure that you don't forget God who brought you to Egypt, the house of slavery. When you have taken that which is not yours and you're enjoying it a lot, don't forget God. That feels odd to me. I mean, that's the rationale where I break into your house, I steal all your stuff, and then I thank God um, that I was able to steal all of your stuff, and now that I'm now I'm enjoying it. That that doesn't work for me. I, I'm 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 flashing back uh, to the parable of the uh, unjust steward. Um, you remember that Jesus tells the parable: the master who go, goes away for a long time, and he's got three stewards, and he gives each of them money. Basically, right? One talent, three talent, five talent, or whatever it was. One, two, five. Anyway, they invest them. They do really well. Uh, except for the one. The one who got the one talent, he just buried it in the ground. When the master returned, he gave it to him and said, there you go. And the master was furious. And the response from the steward was, I know you're a man who reaps where you do, do not sow. And the master says, oh, you know that, do you? You know that I'm the kind of person who sows, who reaps where they did not sow. Which to me, the parable says that that's a bad thing. You shouldn't reap where you do not sow. That's a parable that Jesus told me. Then the bad guy does exactly what we're celebrating here. We are literally reaping where we did not sow. We're living in houses we did not build because we killed everybody. Yes, I struggle with that. And I struggle with that not just because I am woke um, and, uh, you know, have, have, have come to understand the, the, the inherent dangers of colonialism, um, uh, the sin of taking which is not your. It, it's, it's not just that. It's Jesus argues against that in the parable, I think. So I'm stuck with that. And, 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 and so not only am I supposed to celebrate taking something that was not mine, right? Um, but also I'm reminded I better thank God for it because if I don't, I'm going to be in trouble. All right? Don't forget God. Fear him. Serve him. Um, that's that's what, what matters. Do not even think about other gods. Because the anger of the Lord your God would be kindled against you and he would destroy you from the face of the earth. Now, I was just invited yesterday, earlier in this chapter, to love the Lord God with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my might. I'm invited into this loving relationship. I talked about that, how this is this. there's a very personal relationship in this. And now I'm being told that this person I love is telling me that I better keep loving them or they'll kill me. Now, if that happened in the world I live in between people, I would say that's a coercive, abusive relationship. I would say that the one uttering death threats is not a responsible, loving partner. And I would encourage the one who is being threatened to break the relationship. Wouldn't you? So again, 
Is that my modern mind? And I should just get rid of all of that by experience, by my, my, my modern thoughts. That I should no, no, just just accept that that's how it's going to be. Do what God says, or God's going to wipe you out. And earlier in this in this in this book, we've we've had that quandary too, where where, where God talks about never leaving us, staying with us in the covenant. But then we couple it with yeah, but if you if you mess up, then then you're out of the promised land. Like God said, no matter what happens, I'm with you. But if you mess up, I'm not with you anymore. That was a problem. Now it's if you mess up, I'll destroy you from the face of the earth. And by the way, don't put the Lord your God to the test as you tested him at Massa. Now, if you remember Massa, of course you do. <laughs> um, Exodus 17. I actually know that. Uh, but it, it, it's the time when, 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 when the Israelites, so we're early in the Exodus, and the Israelites are complaining, there's no water, there's no food, there's no water. Why did you bring us out here? Did God send us out here just so that we would that we would, they would die of thirst? What a horrible thing this is. Um, they'd already forgotten how horrible it was in Egypt. Uh, haven't been on the road that long. There's the water. And Moses, at, with God's instruction, hits the rock. And the rock um, spews out water. And so now they have water, and that place is called Massa, uh, where, where, they were t- where they tempted God, uh, where they tested God. So the test was, if you love us, do what we say. Yeah, basically. So the... the, 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 the the sin of that moment is that, yeah, they, they, they wanted to test God's love. They doubted God's love. Don't do that, we're told. Don't, don't, don't doubt God's love. Oh, but by the way, if you fail in doing all things God wants you to do, God is going to wipe you out from the face of the earth. Do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord. Um, that may go well with you, so you may go in and occupy the good land that the Lord swore to your ancestor to give you, thrusting out all your enemies from before you as the Lord has promised. I can see the context for these words. The problem is my context is different, and so I'm tempted to say these words have no value to me. So what I believe the context of these words being spoken is, uh, and, and I... <clears throat> I've been up front about this a number of times. I don't think these are Moses' words. I think this is somebody taking Moses' voice. I think this is a book that was written later and added um, to uh, to the books of Moses. Uh, this is the one that we found as we were reestablishing Israel after after uh, after exile, occupation. Um, so out of the rubble, we're rebuilding. And what's happened, of course, is that our our our, our children and our children's children are not dedicated to the faith they have picked up the other face the other gods right when you think about it it says here you know do not follow uh, other gods any of the gods the peoples who are of the peoples who are all around you well this is the end of the exodus there are peoples all around them they're not settled in picking up influences from other people no they are a fairly tight tribe Right? But this does speak to those who are now open to other people and, in fact, have been in exile. Our children have been living there with those people. Or we have been occupied and, therefore, um, oh, oh, you know, that, that there's been another culture that influences us. And so, yeah, our kids are picking up a little ball worship here, a little of this and that. No. So this is, this is really trying to just, just get it right. This is, these are words of anger, hurt, and frustration. Screaming at the children and going like, it doesn't seem that big a deal. What the heck? I just, you know, I just, I just rubbed the ball statue, you know, before I go out for a party. Like, you know, just so I'll have a good time. What's the problem with that? They're going, no, because God will destroy you. When I was, you know, uh, when I was a father to young children, my kids, the three, three boys in the back seat of the car uh, arguing and fighting, you know, I would say things from the front seat like, stop it. You're going to distract me. We'll drive off the road and crash and die. <laughs> I did want to say something very similar to that. Um, you're making, you're, you're, you're being super dramatic just to get the result you're looking for. The result I'm looking for here is for the kids to reject the other faiths and to, and to, and to cling to, to the faith that, that is important in my mind. You know, that, 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 that adherence to 
to the God of Abraham, to to the rules and regulations, to the ordinances, to, to, the, to the faith. And so I'm using very threatening language. And I'm celebrating the idea that there was a time when, when we went and we took what wasn't ours and we enjoyed it. Right? We took those houses that we didn't build. And yeah, we enjoyed it because, of course, we have had that happen to us. This is actually a different thing than being slaves in Egypt. No, no, we have been invaded. We have lost. We have been in exile. We have been oppressed. And so people have come and live in that, lived in the houses that we lived in. Right? And they have, they have reaped what we sowed. And so, <clears throat> yeah, but with that, we, we did it too. Again, it's a, it's a situation where, where, where somebody who is a victim can actually, in, in an effort to, um, look at me psychoanalyzing Israel, but in, a, in an effort uh, to, to reclaim self-esteem, self-worth, um, do the very thing that was done to them. And that's what we're recalling here. What's happened to us? Yeah, but we've done that too. Swings and rounds about it. It happens. We're not lesser just because they conquered us. We've conquered people too. We're not lesser because they took our homes. No, no, we've taken people homes too. In fact, we're going to do that again and, it'll never, and it's never going to happen to us again because we're going to follow God's rules. God will stick with us and we're going to be fine. So get it right. Follow the rules. And nobody can ever do this to us again. It, it, it's, we're trying to build our confidence here. So I get that. The thing is that I live in a world where that's not my reality. I have not been in exile. Um, I have not been oppressed in such a way. So it's hard for me to lean into that. And it's very easy for me to let go of that God that's being described here. And I've shared this before, um, but when you're hurt, you believe that if somebody loves you, they'll go and hurt the person who hurt you. They will get vengeance for you. Okay, that's I mean I I I have I have shared of a, of a time of my life. Where, where bad things happen to me. Um, and and the, the, the fact that when my parents knew, learned what had happened, the fact that they didn't go and kill the person hurt me. I didn't even know it at the time. But, you know, <laughs> therapy is a wonderful thing. Work through stuff. You spend some time. But, 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 the, but the thing is that I had expected someone who loves me will will get vengeance for me. We'll do the thing that I couldn't do, which is fight back hard. So, with everything that Israel has been through and everything they're trying to do now rebuild, I'm not surprised that, that their vision of God is somebody who is tough as nails and will wipe out the people who are in opposition. Because I wish I'd had the power to wipe out the people who were in opposition to me. And I didn't, but, but, but God, and God loves me, so God will do that. And so once, once you've got a God who, who is, who is um, uh, thrusting out the people in front of us and, and, and giving me their homes, uh, well, it's n not a big shock to understand that, that God also then will expect that kind of allegiance from me too. Like, you better be in step or I'll wipe you out off the face of the earth. But that's not the world in which I live. But I understand it. So is there anything in this for me? And I think the reach for me is there's something in this meaning God can speak to me in any context. I just have to be aware of my context. Scripture can speak to me in every context too, but I don't need to adapt Scripture's context. These are a people who who have been, you know, um, who are just coming out of a very horrible time and they're trying to rebuild and reclaim their faith. And so these words spoke to them and gave them strength and confidence. 
But now, the world I live in, these words actually become an invitation to me to be colonial, to go and do this to other people. And that's not. And so I think that's not the point. I think it's important to understand the context uh, and understand how, how, how our context is different. At least my context is different than, than, than this one. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't like it. <laughs> but that's why I don't like it. I think it's the context. Um, but also because I don't think Jesus likes it either. I don't think Jesus likes it either. Um, and, you know, as I, as I mentioned, the parable of the unjust steward. Um, yeah. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it, I'm going to leave it there and leave it with you to wonder about. Take all weekend if you'd like. I know I will. And, uh, and we'll see what kind of light comes on Monday. For now, let me offer a prayer. Loving God, thank you. Thank you for stories that confound and yet can also inform. Thank you for the opportunity to, to wonder, to hear your voice and be guided so that we might so that we might hear your voice in this time and place and not be stuck, not be stuck in history, old battles, old experiences that are not relevant. We might hear your word that is always relevant. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's enough for me today, but I do look forward to seeing you uh, on Monday. Until I get to see you, God bless. It is a holiday Monday uh, in, in Canada, uh, but I'll still be posting because because I'll still be praying. And I'll still be reading scripture, so I'll share that with you on Monday. Until I get to see you, God bless. Please know that God sees you, knows you, and loves you exactly as you are. And know, and know that God's love doesn't just stop with you. It, it moves into the world, and, and it... It touches others in amazing ways. The love you share is not just your love, it's God's love too. Because that's what it is to be a blessing. It is to receive, but also to share God's love. To be seen by God, but also that others might see God in you. So God bless you. Thank you for being you. Have a good weekend. See you Monday. <laughs>